All right, today is the day. We are out here with the Leviathan Project. Um, it is uh, getting desperately hot here in Southern Oregon. We hit about 114 degrees yesterday. And so sorry for the noise here, but the air conditioning is running behind me. Hope the compressor doesn't kick on, it's out here as well. But anyway, we're here looking at hay because we are going to do a little project in this episode. We have here, with the original Silverado that I purchased, it has a nine and a half inch uh, floating axle rear end, and we are gonna replace that. We have picked up a 11 and a half inch uh, full floating axle to put in here, beef it up, and it was able to, we had to go to that route to be able to get the right ARB air lockers and ring gear to get the ratio we wanted. We will also be doing the ratio change and air lockers in the front as well. That'll have to happen in a different episode. But we're going to jump in, change out this rear end, and get it set up with air lockers and new gear ratios. Let's jump in. Luckily in the world of auto recycling, there was a differential uh, axle out there that needed a new home. Got this from Washington State, $250 and another 200 some in shipping, and I had it in my own backyard. Now this is the first time I have worked on one of these uh, full floating axles with the adjustable bearing pressure system rather than the shims, which turned out to be a wonderful benefit of this larger differential rear end. So anyway, just a little disassembly to see what's going on. Now these uh, bearing caps, luckily, they are pre-marked for you in the castings rather than having to uh, mark them. But if you're doing this on a different kind of differential, you need to mark them. There's our ring gear out. Now it's time to pull the pinion bearings and the pinion gear out. The yoke found out though was on there so hard that I had to pound and pound and leverage and get this bearing wedge in there that still would not come loose. I guess the last person that worked on this thing may have had a leak and they just filled this thing full of some kind of a bonding agent, I don't know, Bondo, whatever. So once I got it off, I had to clean it out. But to solve my problem, I just went to Harbor Freight and bought this hydraulic bearing puller. I don't know if I'll have to use it again, but it is a good tool to have when you need to pry off something with a lot of pressure. Anyway, that's off. Take the seals. Now we can uh, knock the pinion out and then the pinions out. Now to get the races out. Just took a piece of pipe. There is a little bit of lip of the race sticking up so you can get that on them. Work around it. And it is out. So now we need to move on to getting the new pinion ready. And that's going to require us pushing brand new bearings on there. And there is a shim that we need to take off of the old pinion. I'm going to throw the other pinion up here next to it, show you what the difference is between these two. The large pinion is the old one. Now that we're going to a different ratio. We need a smaller pinion, larger ring gear. So we're going to pull this old pinion apart, get the shim, put it in there between that bearing and the gear itself. And then we will press that pinion shaft and gear into our bearing. Now the next race that goes on the opposite side has to be put in while it's into the case because the whole thing goes together in this way. And uh, there's a difference in the castings from case to case on these manufacturing. So they have to use that shim to make the shim adjustment so that it meshes into the ring gear properly. That shim is a, the only adjustment you have. So we just tried with the first one, the shim that came off the old one, and that seemed to work. Now to set the bearing preload, there's this crush sleeve that you can see in blue here. And as you tighten down the nut on the yoke, it will crush that thing and set that pressure for you. And we need to get the new races in. Like I said, this casting is machined out to hold these races and it is uh, machined pretty accurately. Like I said, just minute adjustments with that shim going to take place. But we're going to seat these races in. Most typical of any um, putting race, nice tight machine fit. I put some, put them in some ice just to shrink them down a little bit. No, not that's really necessary, but we did it anyway. Tap those races in with a brass tap and it's ready to go. 
So here we have our pinion ready to go, slide the crush sleeve on there. Another thing I discovered, maybe why this thing had some goop in there trying to seal it, but the seal does not fit on the end of this yoke. Come to find out there is an adapter available. I had to order one of those another couple of days waiting for that. But that adapter slips on to our yoke and adds another eighth of an inch to the diameter. And once you have that on, then of course the pinion seal fits on there very nicely. And in fact, these two seals kind of intermesh make for a great seal. So one seal left on the yoke, we will have to tap in the new seal into the housing. We'll race on top of that to use the pound it nice and flat. Make sure it's square and tight in there. And then we can slip the yoke in trying to mesh the splines. And then we're going to put a little bit of uh, assembly lube on our washer and nuts so that they will slip and not uh, detract from any readings we get when we try to put our torque wrench on there and measure our preload. We'll get those slipped on. Another uh, tool I had to purchase is this uh, holder that holds your yoke in position while you uh, torque down to crush that sleeve. And we started putting some pressure on this thing, doing what we can. I even went out and bought a high powered impact wrench and I could not get this preload set. No matter what I did, it was just not crushing down and getting the preload we want. Just always ride a little too easy, no preload. So this thing had to come apart. We're going to find out what's wrong. What I did is I just took the old bearing, the original one off of the original pinion, ground the inside out so that it would fit over our pinion easily so I could take it off and on at ease without having to press it off and on. And then we put it all together and just started driving it down, put some pressure on it while we were able to look and see what's going on. I noticed that the crush ring just doesn't seem to be changing. Normally it's going to start bulging out, so I'll get a measurement off it, drive it down. And I could not get it even with a 800 pound torque wrench it wasn't crushing. So after some measuring, I noticed that the old crush ring already started in the crush position. I just put it in a little, uh, tightening and it worked great. So now it's time to take the carrier and put the ring gear on it. Now this is of course the ARB air locker carrier. And I'm going to go out there with my gloves because I have the ring gear sitting in the oven, heating up to about 400 degrees. Now these are machined to pretty tight tolerance, but if you heat this ring gear up just like this, it seems to drop right over. Even able to rotate just a little bit, help me get a few nuts in, get a couple tightened up so that when I turn this thing over, it doesn't drop off as it's cooling. And then I have to go through that whole process again. Now we'll just go around and uh, put all of our nuts in and get this thing torqued down. A little Loctite on each one of these just to make sure that nothing comes apart in this thing when it's in. And then I'm going to have to call on Emerson to come out and give me some help because it takes a pretty hefty torque requirement on these bolts. And we'll test Emerson's strength to see if he can hold on while I have some leverage at my advantage. But we get this thing all torqued down and it's ready to start assembling for a few other components that have to go on before it goes into the housing. The first of these is a slip ring that's going to supply air to that little tiny hole right there. Air goes through that little hole into the mechanism of the air locker and engages down inside this whole carrier. But we have this uh, slip ring that provides air through this little copper tube goes around a couple of O-rings and then into that little tiny hole. So we're going to lube it up so that we can slip it on. And it needs to, of course, be able to rotate freely before this whole thing is gets uh, filled with gear oil and gets into operation. So that needs to go on first because then we are ready to put our bearings on the end. We'll get this one just tapped on, just started, take it out to the press to get these things pressed on. Now there is a little lip to keep it going down just where it seats, which still allows the slip ring supply and air to be able to rotate behind that bearing. Once we get this bearing pressed on all the way, 
we see it bottoms out and flip it over and put the other bearing on. But you won't see that. I'll just take this now, take it over. We're going to give it a try into the casing. Now, before that goes in, we have to get some way to get the air into the air locker. Now, ARB sends in their instructions, drill a hole, tap it to a quarter inch national pipe thread standards. So we've drilled our hole in here. I think other people have tried different locations. I looked this thing over to be this was the best option. Now here are all the air fittings that need to go into that threaded hole. We'll take this one here on the right. It's going to be the one that goes in, holds all the other pieces together. Now, as I put this thing in, I made a big mistake right here. And that is that I started threading this thing in with an open end wrench. Now this fitting is a little bit soft and this was a problem in the end as it ovaled the fitting. I didn't know that, but we're bringing the carrier gear over and it weighs about 85 pounds. I'm really glad I could have this thing on a couple of sawhorses rather than up in the vehicle. And once we get it in, we're going to start adjusting our backlash. Now, like I said, these uh, differentials, these AAM differentials are wonderful in that they have these uh, threaded rings that, ex well, once you thread them, of course, backwards, they expand and put pressure on the bearings. That's the way they adjust the preload on these rather than using shims. Other differentials, you have to add or subtract shims to each side to move the ring gear back and forth to make it mesh tighter or further away from the pinion gear. So we've put it in there, got it as close as we think we're going to have it, and then put some end caps on just to start checking things. Now here's our backlash with a dial indicator set up, magnetic dial indicator. And this is just going to check how far this thing can move when it knocks from one tooth to the next on the ring gear. So now we need to get our airline start to tuck them in. We just be go back and forth under this airline because we can't really fit it in because we have to keep taking things in and out and turning things. And this thing would just wrap around the carrier. But we need to now turn that uh, slip ring just enough because there is a little notch in the slip ring that a little retaining bracket goes into and holds it from turning. Luckily, this little copper line that uh, ARB puts on this uh, slip ring is nice and soft copper and it allows for many trial and error fits, bend it back and forth. Although you still worry that you're going to break it off as it is pretty small and tiny. But I got here as far as I could go and then I thought that, hey, I had some extra tubing that I cut off because it was really long. So I'm going to bend a piece to at least get the angle and the piece fit that goes up through our fitting. And then I'll just mark the tube that goes into the slip ring. That way I can uh, hold these pieces together and get the other end adjusted without having to actually poke it in and uh, try to run it into the fitting. Now this can just be hand bent. Just try to keep it long sweeping curves, of course, so you don't get any kinks. And once I got the profile pretty much matched with my spare piece, they will just take a Sharpie, go ahead and mark where I need to cut that thing off so I can get the length perfect. This thing's just going to come through the fitting and just barely stick above the surface. Once I got this thing all marked ready to go, you need to cut this off with a little pipe cutter. The end can't be uh, jagged, like if you try to cut off with a grinder, you're going to have, of course, filings falling into the tube as well. So a little pipe cutter like this, super cheap at a hardware store. Go around a few times until that thing cuts off. And I'm even going to go in with a little super fine file, make sure that little sharp edge is nice and smooth and round so it doesn't cut the O-rings as I go in. Don't want to ever have to worry about taking this case apart again if there's some airline problem. 
So even after all that adjustment to make sure that the length was right and the bend was right, it's still going to take me some turning and twisting and bending. And I worry about this thing, and so I'm going to add some added protection. I'm going to slip on a little piece of vinyl heat shrink. That way, if this thing ever moved in, say, a curb hit or some hard impact on off-roading, and that tube was to flop over against the carrier, at least the vinyl will wear away before it can engage with the copper tube. Matter of rotating that slip ring back to get the pipe into position. And now we've got it finally moving up into the tight little hole of that fitting. And once it's in, we're going to check, make sure that it's not rubbing, touching anything. And we'll be doing that again as well as we get the retainer in. So as we're about ready to do the fittings, the ARB book shows you all the fittings and what order they go in. Here they are in their order. O-ring, little spacer, another O-ring, and then a little threaded compression ring. So the O-ring fits tight over the little tube. We're able to push it down around that tube. And here's, uh, I mentioned before, there was a problem. This is where I discover that problem. That little spacer, little brass washer, basically, I could not get it to go into this fitting. Now it's ovaled, but I can't tell because it's so minute of an error that I finally had to just realize what it was, swap it out with one from the kit from the front differential, order another one, just wait for the one to come. I said, don't use the open end, use the box end. Learn from my mistakes. Anyway. Thread that new one in, and then things, as you'll see, go together much easier. O-ring goes in, slides right down. The spacer, bought it before, but now it goes in. Second O-ring, and the little compression uh, nut. And it threads down, need a little bit narrower screwdriver to get it to bottom out. It goes down, crushes the two O-rings, not so tight that you over crush them and then a little banjo fitting to accept our airlines. Now we're gonna throw this uh, cap back on once more and try to get our uh, retaining plate in. Same thing on the other side. Throw these bearing caps in place. Now here's the retainer. It is just this piece of uh, Sheet metal that's uh, bent at 90 degrees, has a little tab that goes down, goes into the notch of that slip ring. I'm having to rotate the slip ring just a little bit to get it to line up with the notch. Get it, put a little torque on those uh, caps, and adjust my uh, tubing once again. A little drag on that slip ring. Shrink up the hate shrink tubing. Now there's a little hole in that bracket as well. ARB supplies you with some zip ties. So we're going to put a zip tie on, keep that thing from trying to rotate as well. And now we get our final torque on those uh, bearing caps. And while we're there, do one more check on our backlash, make sure nothing's changed. Now the, the gear suppliers, they give you a little kit of some paint. It's used to check what the actual mesh condition is of these gears as they go around. So you put a little paint on the ring gear and then put the whole differential through a few rotations and then you can come back and see what the wear pattern is going to look like. Now this is a little bit high, riding a little too far out. It should be a little bit deeper onto the gear tooth, but it is centered nicely, which is good. And there is a little bit of a paint on the outside of the gear there that's not wearing off, so that is good. Another thing, turn it around and check where the paint has rubbed off onto the pinion gear and then transferred over to the new gear. And you can see also another way. And that's riding pretty centered. I said maybe a little bit to the outside, but there is some paint on the outside, but I'm happy with it. So we're going to now go ahead and uh, finally start buttoning this thing up. Now those uh, 
adjustable shims, those little threaded pieces that come out and adjust the preload on those bearings are locked in place by a couple of little uh, heavy wire retainers. On the side give you a little bit of problem because it's not lining up for the wire to go in the holes. But there it is. Finally got those on. And let's test the air locker before we button this up as well. You can hook an air fitting on there. That air, that noise was the locker engaging. And while we're here, we're going to throw some soapy water on this thing. Hope we don't get any bubbles. And it looks like we are tight. I think we can close this thing up. First thing off, we're going to throw the axles back in. Now this is the beauty of these full floating axles is we don't have to slide the axle in and find some C-clip to lock them in. Once they slide in, the splines engage, boom, pops in. All it takes is putting the eight bolts back in and that'll hold that axle engaged into the differential. A little Loctite, the eight bolts. Drive these in, torque them down, and we will have the axles ready. And the final thing, we're going to throw our differential case on. And of course, this is the infamous 14 bolt Chevrolet. So 14 bolts, a little bit of torquing. And we'll have that buttoned up as well, closed up. Now, if we can just remember to put some gear oil in this thing before we try to operate it, but it's ready to roll out and install. So let's roll the old one out of the way. And we will roll it out, take the tires off, move to the new axle and roll the new one in. And that will be another video. All right, well, there you have the assembly of this AAM 11 and a half inch differential and the axle assembly. We do have new brake shoes on there for the parking brake, the emergency brake, but we begin to transfer the rotors from the old axle. Brake lines also need to move over, but that this thing is pretty much ready to crane into place, put those wheels on it, roll it underneath there and get it bolted in place with our brand new U-bolts. But that is our video for today. We hope you're interested in this Leviathan project. If you are, certainly subscribe down below. Keep coming back and seeing these videos as we post them. But thanks for coming by today. We will see you again.